all right everybody this is the insightful caveman i'm coming to you from the cave and uh today i want to talk about personal finances specifically debt and uh, strategies to get out of debt so there are two competing strategies that i know of that i kind of like the first is a debt snowball the second one is the debt avalanche and both of them are good some people think one is much better than the other uh i actually kind of think that a hybrid approach is actually a really good idea but i'm going to explain these to you and then um you know if you have any questions leave them in the comments uh and so we'll go from there all right so the there's a big difference between no there's a small difference between the debt snowball and the debt avalanche and the the people who argue for and against um come on man i mean we're talking about how much money are we talking about that you know one plan versus the other i don't think it's that big of a deal i think the biggest deal is making progress and actually getting it done so um i'm on my personal finance blog this is my best friend the money guy.com there's a blog post about it. It's just called uh, Debt Snowball versus Debt Avalanche. Debt, sorry, not dead, Debt Avalanche. Um, so on my blog, I've been pretty open about the fact that I've struggled with debt over the years. Um, I haven't had huge piles of it. I don't have student debt. I didn't have, you know, massive car payments. Well, I've had some pretty big ones, but not the kind of stuff that i see now like six seven eight hundred dollars a month i've never had a car payment like that um or have i maybe i have i don't want to be a liar so anyway regardless i know some people seem to really like their debt they feel like their debt works for them it gives them cash it gives them points it gives them airline miles and i just don't care about that stuff so i'm not going to get into all that if you love your debt keep it it's yours you can have it however you want but if you want to get out of debt then stick around because i think this is something that you uh, might enjoy all right so hopefully i'm reaching somebody like me someone who's been in debt wants to get out of it and Hopefully you'll understand where I'm coming from and, you know, and how to make the big changes uh, so that you can interact with your money better. So, all right. So if you read personal finance blogs and books, I'm sure that you've heard of the debt snowball. Maybe you've heard of a debt avalanche. It's something that you've probably seen on a blog. Um, now, these are two, two methods for paying off debt. They're similar at their core, but there's enough of a difference that it causes people to want to adopt one or the other. And in actually, in many cases, it seems like they just become so locked in on this is the one perfect way to do it um, that they're, they won't even listen to the other side. I, like I said, I, I feel like a hybrid approach is actually probably the best way to do it. But that's just me, and I'll talk about that later on. So, um, the debt snowball is actually what I use to get out of debt. I use Dave Ramsey's plan. He preaches the debt snowball. That's, you know, to him, that's the only way to do it. Um, the debt avalanche, I learned about after I paid off all my debt, so I... I haven't put that into practice, but I understand how it works. So the debt snowball works like this. You write down a list of all of your debts from smallest to largest balance. Okay. So in the example, you've got kids with braces, you owe $4,200. Then you've got a Visa card, $6,100, a MasterCard, $7,800. You've got a vehicle that's $9,600. Your total debt 
is $27,700. Now you go for each of those and write down what your minimum payments are for each. So for the braces, it's 200. For the Visa card, it's 25 bucks. For the MasterCard, it's $42. For the vehicle, it's $350 a month. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna just pay minimum payments on all of your debts except for that top one. The kids' braces, that's the smallest uh, balance that you have left. That one, you're going to put as much money to it as you can. So let's say you have to pay $200 a month. You're gonna, you may be paying more towards your credit cards. You're probably not paying more towards your car, but what you wanna do is basically uh, scrape together as much money as you can every month to pay off that first debt. So instead of paying $200 a month, Let's say you are able to pay $800 a month. All right. How fast is $4,200 going to get paid off if you're paying $800 a month? It's going to be very fast, right? You're talking about a matter of like five months, give or take. It's, it's really quick. Okay. So... Um, once you've eliminated that debt and paid it off, now you're going to put all of the money that you were putting towards the first debt into the second one. You're going to go ahead and keep paying minimum payments on the rest of them. But now this Visa card that you've got $6,100 on and it's got a $25 minimum payment which you will pay for the rest of your life if you just pay minimum payments. Um, you will now put $800 because that's what you've been able to scrape up every month and add that to your $25 minimum. You're going to pay at least $825 a month to pay off that Visa card. $825 a month to pay off $6,100 we're talking about, what is that, like seven, maybe eight months that you pay off that first credit card. All right. Now, now that you've done that and you're still just making minimum payments on the other ones, so you've paid off the kids' braces, you paid off the Visa card, now you're going after the MasterCard, $7,800, and now you're going to pay... The 800 plus the 25 plus 42, okay, or as much as you can. Let's say you're able to get that up to $900 a month. All right. So now I should have been writing this down. The first one we're going to say took five months to pay off. The second one we're going to say took uh let's just say eight months to pay off this last one uh or sorry the third one we're paying nine hundred dollars a month to pay off seven thousand eight hundred dollars worth of debt and so let's say that that takes us i don't even know um i'm not good at math <laughs> uh let's go with nine months all right now we have the 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 vehicle. All right. So we've continued just to pay the $350 a month on the vehicle. And we attacked the MasterCard. So now it's time to attack the vehicle. So the vehicle, what you're going to do is you're going to pay the $800 plus the $25 plus the $42, and now you're going to add $350 to that. So let's just say that that's roughly um, $1,200. So now instead of making a $350 car payment, you're making a $1,200 car payment. And I know this seems like it's magical money, like I just came up with 
uh, this big number that allows you now to pay off everything quickly. But just think about it. You started off with paying at least $200 a month for braces. We added on $600. I think most people, if they tighten everything down, they should be able to find $600. Okay. Now, it may necessitate taking on some extra work, working overtime, maybe getting uh, a part-time job on top of what you're already doing. Or maybe somebody that is not working outside the home is able to take something on to make a little bit of money. I, I'm just saying it's worth it. I think it's worth it. So once we've gotten down to this point, I said we're we're paying one thousand two hundred dollars a month toward the vehicle. So how long is it going to take us to pay off nine thousand six hundred dollars when we're paying one thousand two hundred dollars a month? I mean, we're only talking about what is that? Uh, nine months or less, right? So if we add that all up. Let's say that you it takes you nine months to pay that off. You will have paid off all of this outstanding debt, $27,700, and it will have taken you 31 months, so less than three years. And to be quite honest, uh, I just think that that's doable, okay? Um, and it may not start off easy. It may be that, you know, you're only able to pay $500 a month on the braces, but maybe you build up to where you're getting, you're able to pay off 800 a month. Okay. And then build on top of that, always building on top of that. So that's how the snowball works. And you can see that it really is a snowball. The first, um, the reason why you start with a your smallest balance is because you need to see a win, right? If we did eight hundred dollars a month toward the kids, kids' braces and we finished it off in five months, in five months you're gonna say, oh, "I don't have to make that payment anymore. I'm I'm done with that. I don't owe anything. Now I get to move on to the next one." Okay, this is how the debt avalanche works. You're going to write down your debts from the largest to the smallest interest rate. So let's say your car is your highest interest rate and you're paying, let's say you're paying 12% interest. Okay. You're paying 12% interest on your car. And the reason why that goes on the top of the list with your largest interest rate is because and is because you would want to pay that off the quickest because it's costing you the most money to have that debt. You understand what I mean? Higher the interest rate, the more extra money you're paying. Um, that's above and beyond what your loan balance was for. So the debt avalanche is working kind of the same type of system except for it's looking at interest rate and it's going instead of smallest to largest balance it's going largest to smallest interest rate and you would kind of work it the same way that you would work the debt snowball just with these other uh, numbers in mind i think that the debt avalanche can be completed in the same amount of time or faster than the debt snowball i think the debt avalanche wins out but I think that there is something to be said for having a quick win at the beginning. There's a lot of people that it's like, it's like getting on a diet, okay? A uh, first week, you know, it's tough, but I can do this because I really want it. Maybe the second week is a little harder and I'm not doing so well. And by the third week, I'm like, forget it. This is too hard. I'm, I'm done with this. The same thing can be true for personal finance. 
for getting out of debt. There's a lot of people that try to come up with a plan. They try to do it. They don't fully adopt it. And before you know it, they're back to their old habits. They wanted something right now, so they pulled out the credit card. And they there they are, back in debt. So the bottom line is you have to work the plan that will work for you. Now, the hybrid approach um, that I talk about is let's say that you have something that does have a very large interest rate, right? Um, and it is costing you a lot more money. If, if you want to start there, I would just say let's start with the smallest balance first and get the win, right? And then let's take the largest uh, um, interest rate and make that our second one just so that you get a win in this. Um, I think that being able to pay something off in the first few months is going to be it, I think it's going to be a game changer uh, in your mind so that's where I'm at with it that's the debt snowball and the uh, debt avalanche if you uh, if you have any questions on that um, you can go to my best friend the money guy dot com you can uh Send me an email, a message through that. You can post it in the comments. Uh, as usual, I would love it if you liked, shared, and subscribed to my YouTube channel uh, at The Insightful Caveman. Um, but really, truly, above everything else, work hard, get out of debt, and enjoy life. And that's what it comes down to. So I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.